Yes, folks, it's Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Thank you very much for watching this channel. Do please, come on, like and subscribe. It's still simple, just click that and have a look at my book. There's a link down there. And also, I like the comments. Lots of comments yesterday. And let me tell you, this was a lot of comments on my broadcast about Tommy Robinson. And some that actually threatened me with violence. <clears throat> That's the problem with the, the, the rhetoric of Mr. Robinson. He has a message, but stamping that message into the public's mind by rhetoric that is actually verging on threats, intimidation and violence is not the way to proceed in a political manner. It isn't going to work. And what what we're doing here, what we're what is happening, unfortunately, he has something to say, and it's very very valid. It, it's like a modern day Enoch Powell, except Enoch Powell was an extremely connected and uh, educated politician. And I'm afraid that Mr. Tommy Robinson just doesn't come across that way. He comes across as a street bully, and you can't get anywhere doing that. What you're doing is making yourself a target, and by the, uh, the the terminology that he's using in public and on his video clips, is providing ammunition for the people that are going to shoot him down. And uh, I feel that uh, he's his own worst enemy. Uh, you can have a look at his book, it's Manifesto, it's on Amazon now, so let's get away from Tommy Robinson, I dealt with that the other day. I'm going to talk about a point of view that I heard on Radio 4 this morning on the Today program, <clears throat> Radio 4 this morning, round about 8 o'clock, 8, 8 o'clock-ish, and uh, it was the Minister of Justice saying that they're saying that uh, they're going to deal with prison sentences, change their tack, and they're going to abolish all short-term prison sentences, which will answer a certain degree of overcrowding. I mean, there isn't any point. I've made this point in the last two years I've been doing this channel over and over and over again <clears throat> by putting people into prison for three months or six months or even nine months. You're, all you're doing is ruining their lives and the lives of the people that rely on them for support. I agree that some people do need to be taken off the streets but not people who are going to be sentenced to three months, six months for not paying the TV licence or walking the dogs in the park against the local bylaws or failing to pay a, a speeding fine or something like that. That's just ridiculous. <clears throat> that is an abuse of the system and that is why our jails are overcrowded. Plus the fact that we've got numerous people who are dealing in drugs who are finding themselves in prison and still using their outside contacts to provide drugs in the prisons. From what I am told, it's easier to get drugs on the landings of Strangeways than it is to get drugs on Deansgate in Manchester. Now that is a ridiculous state of affairs. How is it happening? Well, from what I'm told, now listen, you, you, many of you will have been in strange ways, we are reading and watching this, and uh, you can tell me, please do tell me in the comments down below, tell me, how did you get your drugs when you were in there? No names, no pack drill, just want to know. I mean, from what I am told, it's been smuggled in by the staff. Now, you can go on to... Uh, the internet and check what the wages of the staff are at strange ways and it averages about twenty four thousand pounds <clears throat> which is all well and good if you'll have been at home with mummy and you're an 18 year old girl but then again even that won't pay for you a holiday in spain and off to the greek islands or benidorm or wherever you want to go so what what he's doing and i believe this is true from what i am told by ex-inmates is that staff are smuggling the drugs in and a lot of them are being smuggled in by the whole staff brigade. Unfortunately, you just look at the papers, virtually every week you're seeing that there's been a prison officer charged with uh, misconduct in public office. I mean, this is an absolute disgrace. Back in the 70s and 80s when I was there, it was very rare occurrence for staff to do that 
<clears throat> they just didn't do it. But then again, back in those days, a lot of the staff were ex-military and didn't uh, consider even behaving in such a manner. But nowadays, we've got people who are coming in without any formal training. They're not even being interviewed face-to-face. -face. They're being recruited, given a set of keys and a big hat, and off you go onto the landings, along with your lipstick, mascara, and all the rest of it. I don't think they're wearing high heels on the landings yet, but you get the idea. And uh, as you've seen in the papers, some of them are reportedly getting themselves impregnated by the prisoners, which is a disgrace, come on. It should never happen. And they're only doing this, listen, they're only doing this to save money, but they're not saving money in the long term. What they're doing is turning uh, places like Strangeways into a down market Butlins holiday camp where people switching uh, chalets at night and banging the staff. It's, uh, a, 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 it's a farce. It absolutely is. And uh, <clears throat> there's a report today, I mentioned it yesterday in my broadcast, the Ministry of Justice, Charlie Farker, is saying strange ways is riddled with drugs, rats, uh, the cells are falling apart. Listen, I mentioned it yesterday. Andy Burnham's got a plan for the Cheetah Mill area, which includes strange ways, and they're going to knock it down, take it away. It's a blot on the landscape. It's a relic. It's an antique. It's unfit for purpose. It's infested with vermin. There's bloody birds and pigeons shitting all over the place in there. The staff have lost, virtually lost control. I actually do sympathise with them trying to do a job. And I know that they're trying. I've been in there and done it. But when I was in there and did it, we had the big boys and the block. And we had the likes of Bootsy and the, the Black Dog, the Chinese money box. They were all there waiting. You overstepped the mark. You knew what you were going to get. And, if, and occasionally that didn't work. So they would send for the hospital staff and somebody like me with a syringe full of Largactyl would uh, calm them down instantly by injecting it into the upper outer quadrant of their backsides. And that worked. So, <clears throat> as I say, today on Radio 4, they're mentioning that they're revamping the the, the, the sentencing programme for all, all courts and they're going to do away with the short-term sentences. I said one that needs to be, and I'm sure that they must be watching. So if you're watching Ministry of Justice, this is the way to do it. I know I was there. Useless giving three months, one month, six months, nine months sentences. Minimum 12 months. And if the three times you get sentenced to that, on the third time, you're in there for a, well, call it 20 years. And put them in a strong prison, out of the way, float them off to an island, uh, put them in the middle of nowhere. I believe that what you should do is demolish Dartmoor and rebuild a massive Vectus prison there to hold five to 10,000 inmates. And if you are a Category A inmate or you are a repeat offender, then in you go and you don't come out until you've come completed a rehabilitation course and done a minimum of 20 years and they won't want to do that so that would be an answer wouldn't it yep right so it's that time of day folks comments by the way on that i'm happy to hear them and the guy who threatened to come round and see me i live in lancashire by the way it won't be too hard to find me go and see the police they know my name by the way yeah, seeing as my son-in-law is one of the heads. Here we go. <clears throat> He's the head of IT, actually. I'm going to sing you a song now. Song ding has just rung. Yeah, folks, it's here, Luke. There you go. I know you've missed her. You've missed her, song dinger. But it's back. So this is a song by a man called Chris Stapleton. Also recorded by that pervert PJ Proby. <laughs> but this is my version of Whiskey and You. There's a bottle on the dresser by your ring, and it's empty. Right now I don't feel a thing. 
I'll be hurting when I wake up on the floor, but I'll be over it by noon. Uh, that's the difference between whiskey and you. Come tomorrow, I can walk in any store, tell a problem, they'll always sell me more. But your forgiveness, well, that's something I can't buy. There ain't a thing that I can do. And that's the difference between whiskey and you. One's a devil, one keeps driving me insane. At times I wonder if they ain't both the same. But one's a liar that helps to hide me from my pain. And one's the long gone bit of truth. And that's the difference between whiskey and you. I got a problem, but it ain't what you think. I drink cause I'm lonesome. And I'm lonesome cause I drink But if I don't break down And bring it on myself It'll hit me out the blue And that's the difference Between whiskey and you One's a devil One's driving me insane at times I wonder if they ain't both the same. One's a liar, helps me hide from my pain. And one's the long gone bit of truth. And that's the difference between whiskey and you. There you go. Whiskey and you written by Chris Stapleton and just crucified by John G. Sutton here on Tales from the Jails. <laughs> 